could have told Jimmy Carter that would have prevented him from keeping his campaign promise? What single thing could have been so profound that to this very day, uh, Jimmy Carter has such an internal struggle because he's such an honest man, and he is, no matter what else you think of him, that it would bring him to tears uh, to not be able to tell the truth. That's worth a little thought. What could be so profound that you could tell a president that would cause him to break that promise? I don't know. I've been thinking about that one for a long time. Anyway, reaction to uh, the interview with Colonel Philip Corso, his book, The Day After Roswell, probably should have been titled The Years After Roswell. Because if you believe it, and I don't see how you cannot, then all of history, recent modern technological history, has got to be rewritten. And the lies, oh my lies. This is CBC. Calls on the wild card line at 702 727 1295. That's 702 727 1295. First time callers can reach Art Bell at 702 727 1222. 702 727 1222. Now, here again, Art Bell. Good morning, everybody. Well, we'll be in open lines from now through the end of the program. And uh, you heard from Colonel Corso tonight, and I'm seeking reaction, and I'm sure I'm going to get it. I've got a very interesting fax here, and we will explore it in a moment. All right, listen to this. Dear Art, you once said that no one has shown any evidence yet to prove the alien autopsy film to be a fake. Tonight, your guest said that the recovered bodies from the Roswell crash had no sex organs. The autopsy film clearly showed female genitalia. So, which is true? One has to be a hoax. Barry in Arizona. Well, Barry, I would observe the following. If you listen to the colonel carefully, he suggested, number one, not only was there no sex organ, but there, were no, uh, there was no eyes, there was no mouth, there was very little relationship in what he described uh, to uh, what was shown in the alien autopsy. However, to take your point, in what I saw in the alien autopsy, there was no sex. I think that what you did see in the alien autopsy uh, did not clearly show a female uh, sex organ. It showed a lack of anything. Or at least that's my recollection. It showed a lack of really anything. So again, that's my recollection. But uh, beyond question, what the colonel described and what was in the alien autopsy are clearly entirely different things. Uh, West of the Rockies, you're on the air. Hello. Hi, Art. Um, this is Donna from Anchorage. I just want to make one quick comment about sure. tonight's show. Sure. Um, um, I found it very interesting and not sure how to react to the whole situation of what we heard tonight on the radio, but I think it's a good idea to, that if you could get a tape of the show to your friend who does the reverse beat stuff, that might be interesting to listen to also. I would imagine that could be arranged. Yeah, I think And I, I would bet you, I would be willing to bet you a substantial amount of money that you would find the colonel was congruent. Oh, I, I, I would probably say so, but I, I would think it would be very, very interesting to hear what has to be said in the reverse speech. I mean, I've thought of this a million different ways. What possible reason would an 82-year-old man 
who uh, hobnobbed with presidents, was in the exact position he said he was in, doing exactly what he said he was doing. Why would such a man concoct a great fish story like this? I don't buy it. I don't. I don't think it's even feasible that he would even think about concocting the story. It just. I, it's That's pretty, right. It's a pretty amazing, amazing thing to have heard and to think about. Yes. You know? And so, if you believe it, then um, our history is a lie. It, very true. Very true. But, yeah. but but your suggestion is a valuable one, and I will pursue it. Thank you, Art. We All love right. your show. Thank you. Take care. Uh, why not? And I'll bet you. I'll bet you anything it comes out congruent. Anybody want to lay a little bet on that one? I guess we're not supposed to do that kind of thing, huh? But I bet I bet all the time on things. <laughs> I've got a couple of bets going right now that I really can't tell you about. First time caller line, you're on the air. Hello. Hello there. Uh, hi. Hi. I uh, have a question. Good. Where are you? Um, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, all right. What is your first name? Um, I'm Matt. All right, is your radio off? Uh, no. Turn it off. All right. It's going to be very confusing for you otherwise. Um, okay, there we go. Okay, go ahead. All right, um, I just had a question. I'm here in Phoenix, as I said. Um, your, uh, guest, Richard Hoagland. Yes. He said something was supposed to happen. Between, between the 20th and the 26th. Yeah. Uh, Richard Hoagland will be here Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, the 26th. Okay. Well, I'm just sitting here looking at the sky, and I don't see anything. <laughs> well, keep your eyes on the sky, and maybe when you're looking at the sky, it's something that will occur elsewhere. So don't be too confident you're looking in the right direction. Okay. <laughs> All right? All right. Thank you for the call. Uh, Richard uh, is going to be here Friday night, Saturday morning, and tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, um, I think you're going to find to be fascinating. Tomorrow night, we're going to discuss a very, very unusual topic that I have never heard discussed on the radio for real. My guest is Jim Keith tomorrow night. He wrote a book called Casebook, Men in Black, a casebook. Actual cases of the men in black. In my mind... I think that I've probably placed the men in black business pretty much with the black helicopter business. However, it is reasonable to conclude, if you believe what the colonel had to say over the last several hours, and I do, that on occasions when evidence manifested itself uh, that would have blown all this wide open, those who would keep it secret would send their agents to confiscate or discredit witnesses, and those would be what we know as the men in black. So if what Colonel Corso said is true, then the men in black may be true, or perhaps there is a germ of truth that has grown, grown into a myth that we now know as the men in black. West of the Rockies, you're on the air. Uh, yes. <clears throat> I had a, a comment about uh, tonight's show. Okay. Um, yes, sir. I, I didn't hear all of it, but I'd heard the previous interview uh, on Dreamland with uh, Colonel Corso. Right, which I... was essentially, it was a little different uh, than tonight, but essentially the same information. Yes, and I haven't I haven't read the book. I'd be very interested in doing so. But I've got to say, first, I'm a big fan of your show. But I, I'm very skeptical about this, and I think that, that people shouldn't get too excited too quickly. Uh, there are a number of things that, uh, that concern me here. Uh, you know, firstly, uh, if you think about the technology involved in fiber optics, integrated circuits, and such, yes. this is really, a, it, most of this was a logical extension of existing technology. Uh, <clears throat> Not well, you're going to have to lay down some foundation for that one because I don't see it. <clears throat> well, just as the, transi the transistor uh, represented early experimentation with solid-state technology, and that was an extension of vacuum tubes and such, uh, the integrated circuit... Uh, uh, circuit a transistor... Wait a minute. One at a time here, all right? All right. A transistor is not a logical extension of a vacuum tube. <clears throat> 
in the sense that both involve amplification.